What's up, everybody? That was a good question. Um, hey, Mike, how has your training changed over the years, approach to training and that? So, like most humans, I'm capable of learning. And here are the things that I've changed. Number one is the importance of pre- and post-workout nutrition is not as great as I used to believe. So I used to be the guy that had the shake ready to go, like all oh, the anabolic windows closing. I had my glutamine, my creatine, my dextrose, my whey protein and what you have it. And that probably stressed me out more than it actually built any type of muscle. So now that I'm older and wiser, I know that the anabolic window does exist. Yes, that's true, but it's about three hours wide, right? So there's no need to like stress about. Um, in, in, in effect, your pre-workout nutrition is your post-workout, because that's what the bloodstream, right? So even if you eat, let's say, dinner, and then you don't eat in the morning and you train, you will still be having like at least a pound of glycogen in the liver stored so you could train like for hours, right? That's number one. Number two is I had, like most of us, much more faith in high intensity cardio as the magic fat loss bullet than what I have now. So the studies show that the epoch is very little. The differential in terms of like calories burned afterwards is not really worth it. And especially for, let's say, larger mammals like yours truly, sprinting on a treadmill or so is just very bad for the joints. And while I do enjoy swimming and swimming fast, in New York City it's such an effort to get to the pool, find the lane, then you swim fast and somebody complains that you're swimming too fast and it becomes a lane. Anyways, slow and steady wins the race. So like in my olden days, I simply bike to work. That takes me, about, it would take 20 minutes. I do that twice a day. That's all the color I ever need, except for winter, right? So that's one. Then I used to be a big believer in the big five exercises, like the overhead press, the pull up, the deadlift, the squat, and the bench press. And I'm not, you know? So I got pigeonholed thinking that those are the things you must do to get massive, but all I ever got was massive joint problems, right? It doesn't mean the exercises are bad per se, it's just barbells are clunky, right? And for most people, it's not the greatest tool. So for me personally, I got something out of rows for sure. Deadlifts, I don't know, not a great muscle builder, bench press we talked about. So anyways, long story short, instead of like being like, oh, you gotta do those exercises, at some point I started learning and I realized that like, I'm in the business of training muscle not doing exercise, right? So then I switched on and said, okay, wait a minute. So I can do, in my peak, not to tell war stories, but I could do 225 overhead presses, right? But my shoulders weren't really that great. And they were always aching. And then I realized that like with dumbbells, I can actually push inward, right? Which is what the delts do, as opposed to straight up. And also psychologically for me, always training the big exercise and going heavy became somewhat demanding because I had to get ready and they had to get warmed up and so on and so forth. And it, it, it just took a toll. So there's that. Then I was definitely a lot more into supplements than I am now. Maybe I just have gotten jaded. But the truth of the matter is basically there's food and then there's gear, right? And they both work really, really well. Now food, obviously you have to eat, otherwise you're not here much longer. Gear, that's everybody's decision. I'm not gonna get into that. And then in between, there's really Nothing. Like there's creatine, caffeine, a multivitamin if you want, zinc, magnesium, and that's really where it ends, right? So supplements is something that I've gotten, like I said, much more jaded. I just, just don't use them, you know. Like I said, food and drugs. And in between, it's sort of like more or less useless for the most part. That's that. And then, But I think the biggest thing I realized is that you don't always have to train all out. So I was the guy, you know, with the headphones, this was before big headphones, but still my headphones in and always like, you know, you gotta crush them or whatever. And you just can't, like no other sport does that, right? So it's it's just like, some workouts just are. And that's okay too. You know, you don't have to break Ronnie's record in the squat every single week. Look where it got him, right? So I go to the gym and I just accept that some workouts are like, okay, just like work. Not every day do you get promoted, right? So those are my main takeaways in no particular order. Pre and post workout doesn't, nutrition doesn't matter so much. Most supplements are overhyped. The big exercises are probably not necessarily need to do training your muscles. It's okay to have an off day. And more importantly, and I'm gonna close that, you train for you, right? Not for me not for muscle and fitness, not for Instagram, I hope. So 
I used to be so conscious what other people think of my physique and what I was wearing in the gym. And then in New York City, the, the conclusion is like, nobody cares, right? Nobody cares. So you're doing this for you, you know, not for me, not to impress anybody. So life's short, enjoy the workout. If your post-workout meal is half an hour late, you'll probably survive. If you cannot press 315 overhead, you can still have great shoulders. You know, just use your head, follow this channel, my God.